Hello again everyone. So I hope you are all having a good day. So today we'll be continuing our uh, lesson for engineering economy. So we have now the fourth type of annuity which is the perpetuity annuity. So again we have the ordinary annuity, due annuity, deferred annuity and the last one which is the perpetuity annuity. And now for the definition, uh, Going back, recalling some of the types of annuities, we have ordinary, the payments are made every end of the month. Or, and due annuity, is uh, payments are made every beginning of the month and deferred has a delayed payment or delayed years. Now for per perpetuity, the payments are made indefinitely or forever. So this is a continuous uh, payment even though after your, after your death. Okay? So yes, uh, that really happens in real life and that is also possible. So there are payments that are made even after the death of a person. Okay, So that is really the payments are made indefinitely or basically forever. Um, okay, so let's try to derive the formula. So we have the formula. So um, getting the formula for the perpetuity annuity, we have the present worth and the future worth. However, since the payments are made indefinitely or forever, so there is, there is a continuous payment, there is no way for us to know the future worth because, again, the payment is indefinitely, indefinite or the payment is made forever. So the payment is continuous, so the future worth will just be simply infinity. But there is a way for us to know the, uh, the value of present worth. Okay, so let's try to recalling the formula for annuity. We have P equal to the annuity, right, times, let's just consider an interest rate, okay? So that is 1 minus 1 plus. I raise to negative yn, okay, all over i. There you go. So this is the formula for annuity. But since the payment is made indefinitely or forever, we can say that we can say that y will be equal to what? We can say that this is just equal to infinity right infinity now um, considering only this part okay this part only now considering only that part we can have rewriting that part we have 1 plus i raised to negative y n now I can rewrite this as if I want to make it positive, the exponent positive, all I have to do is just bring down the 1 plus i. Okay, bring down. So bringing it down, you have um, 1 plus i raised to y n. Now the, the exponent now will be positive. 1 will be positive. Okay. But we all know that um, y is infinity, right? So if y is infinity, we can have we can simply find this one with um, infinity, right? Y is infinity, it's not, it's, therefore infinity times n is just infinity, still infinity. So we can have one all over one plus i raised to infinity. Now, um, getting uh, getting the value of this one, what will be the value of this one? We will have here, we can have here uh, applying the concept concept of limits. We can have here the, no, uh, if, even without applying the concept of limits, we can have here, since the value of this one, 1 plus, 1 plus, i raised to infinity. We all know that the value of 1 plus i is always greater than 1. Right? That, is, that will always be greater than 1. Because i will never be 0. That is all, even though that is 1%, that will be 0 0.01. So that will become 1 plus 0 0.01, that's 1.01. 1 .01. So that's still um, 
raise to or uh, greater than 1. So raising a number which is greater than 1, let's, let, uh, for example, 1.01 .01 raised to infinity or raised to a very large number, you'll have your 1 all over a very large number. Okay? So as you can see, um, for example, we have 1 half. That is equal to 0.5, right? 0.5 and 1 third is equal to 0.33 and 1 fourth is equal to 0.25 and 1 fifth is equal to 0.2. As you can see, when the, denom when the denominator gets higher and higher, it increases in value. This one, when the denominator denominator increases it, its value, it keeps increasing. The value of the fraction decreases, okay? From 0 0.5 to 0 0.33, 0 0.25 to 0 0.2. So if I will make the denominator a very large number, like this one, like this one, it will approach, we can say that this is, up, this is approximately equal to what? Zero. That will now be approximately approximately equal to zero. Therefore, we can say that this part is just zero. Now, considering that 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 factor is zero, and simplifying the value for this one, you'll have here p is just equal. So that is just one minus zero. So that is just one. So a times one that will become a all over i. So this will become the formula for perpetuity annually. Just this one. Just this formula. Very easy to remember. P is equal to a i. Okay, so with this formula, I think we can go now to our sample problems. Okay, so going for our first problem. So we have a product is to be paid perpetually. So we can now consider that this annuity is a perpetuity for 11,506 at the rate of 5%. So how much is the present worth of the product? Okay, so uh, for number one, okay, for number one, let's put down the givens first. We have to be paid perpetually for 115 rate of 5%. So therefore, that is our A or the annuity. So this is 11,506 and we have a I of equal to 5%. So how much is the percent worth of the product? So we are now required to find the P. So all you have to do is just simply um, direct sub it to our formula which is P is equal to A over I. So this is just um, 11. 506 all over again 5% is also equal to the decimal equivalent which is 0 0.05 don't forget about that okay so using your um calc the value for that is simply divide 0 0.05 and that's 231.20 so the answer for this one is 231.20. There you go. So this is just an easy one. Okay, so let's go to number two. Okay, so for number two, we have if an electric appliance present worth is 12545 and is being paid at 3553 indefinitely, calculate the interest. Right. So we have the present words um, already mentioned in the problems. We have the present words of uh, 12, 5, 4, 5, and it's being paid indefinitely. So that will be our annuity. That's 3, 5, 5, 3. And now we are required to find the interest rate, which is the I. Whatever the value of this one, it must be in percent. So for the solution, again, just direct sub it to our formula, P equal to A over I, since I is uh, the one missing. 
um, cross multiplying p and i, you'll have i is just equal to um, a over p. So a will be 3, 5, 3, 3, all over 12, 5, 4, 5. So getting the value for this one, we have that's 0 0.28. You can use a uh, four decimal places, 0.6. Or this is also um, approximately equal to 28.16%. Okay. So this will your this will be your final answer. And let's go to our next problem. Okay, so for our third problem, we have a car is to be paid 15,000 forever at a rate of 9%. So what is the amount of the car after 9 years at 6% compounded quarterly? So if you uh, read this problem, this is quite confusing because as you can see, uh, we have a given which is 15%, ah, sorry, 15,000 compounded forever at the rate of uh, 9%. And we have another interest rate given, which is 6% compounded quarterly. So what is the amount after 9 years? As I mentioned earlier, there's no way for us to know the future worth, right? Because the payment is made indefinitely or forever. But you can, um, you can somehow bring the money to a specific year. Okay? So we will try to do that in this problem. So doing that, so let's put first the givens. So we have the given of paid 15,000 forever at the rate of. So we have an A, so that is an A to be paid because that is the amount being paid. So that must be 15,000. 15,000 and we have an I of 9%. So that is, remember this one, this is forever. Okay? So we can say that this part is uh, perpetuity. And then we have another given. So what is the amount of the car after 9 years? So, so we have y equal to 9 years. And then we have... Um, so that's, we have the word compounded. Therefore, the given is j. We have 6%. And n is equal to 4. So this part now will be compounding interest. Compound interest. Compound interest. Alright, so going back to the problem, just I'll just uh, try to explain it. So we have a car. We have a car that we have to pay it fifteen thousand at the rate of nine percent forever. Okay. So again, we have no way to know the future, future worth because it's being paid forever. But we can. What we will do? But uh, what we will do here is, since the Required is amount of the car after nine years at six percent compounded quarterly. What we will do is this one we can bring it to the present first, and then since uh, the present, of course, that is the year zero, after bringing bringing it on the present or the or at the year zero, we bring it again into the ninth year. Okay. So let's go for the solution. Okay, so for the solution again, so for right, so for this one, let's just try to get the present amount first. So P now will be equal to again that's A over I, right? So our A will be fifteen thousand, right? Fifteen thousand all over I, which is zero point zero nine. So that will be your P. Okay, so this is fifteen thousand. Um, divide 0 0.09. Okay, so this is equal to 26 is that? Okay, that's 166,000. I'll just round, round, oh, round off that into 166,667. Okay, so that will be your present word. So since this amount is already at the year zero, we have to bring this amount 
now into the ninth year. That is just by using the formula for uh, formula on the compound interest. Okay. Uh, so bringing the value of this value into the ninth year, so we can use the compound interest formula. So we have let's just call that uh, F nine. Okay, F nine, since that is the future world at the ninth year. So this is equal to um, this value. So that is one hundred sixty-six uh, six six seven. Um, compound interest, so that's 1 plus, so this is the uh, years and interest, so we have this one. So we have 6% compounded quarterly, so that's 0 0.06 all over 4. Okay. And raised to YN, so uh, should be positive since you're going to the right or you're going to the future. So Y must be equal to? 9 times 4. Okay. So putting this in uh, my calculator, you'll have 1 plus 0 0.06 over 4 raised to 3. Okay. <clears throat> so the answer will be 284 856 856 so we so we may have some uh, decimal uh, differences but that is fine so some decimal errors are allowable okay so this will be your answer okay so so perpetuity annuity is uh, I think the easiest uh, annuity among the four. So this is just a short video for explaining this one. So I hope everything is clear. If you have any question, again, just leave a comment down below. And thank you again all guys for watching. And don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. And of course, um, click that bell notification. So you'll be notified as soon as I upload a new one. And also... Uh, you can watch also my previous lesson. So I hope you guys all are having a good day. Keep safe everyone. And I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.